Let's take just a few minutes and talk about some of the various features and options that you can find available on your spray bodies. I mentioned this before in the introduction to sprays lesson is the side inlet and you're going to find this available on a 6 or 12 inch model spray and all sprays come with a bottom inlet but 6 or 12 inches also can come with or without the side inlet. And this is pretty handy when you're installing or retrofitting a zone with some larger size sprays so that you don't have to dig not only down to accommodate the spray, but down and over to accommodate the flex pipe or whatever you're using to supply the head. Then you can just, you know, use it at the, this is about what, four inch depth here so that it doesn't have to be so deep and you just have to dig a smaller hole so that you can set this down in there and get it to ground level. You know, I've used both and it really doesn't matter. You just have to take the plug out of the side inlet and put it in the bottom if you're going to use the side inlet. Now, there's also another feature called pressure regulation. It uh, generally happens in the stem itself. There's regulation there usually at 30 or 40 PSI. And that's typically the range that the manufacturers want the pressure to be at at the spray head. There's a couple different reasons for that. If you have a higher pressure, and we're looking here at a video of a, of a 12 inch spray that's under extreme pressure, I think this may even be, you know, 80 or 90 PSI in this zone, and you can see that the, the water is misting, it's blowing out, it, the, the wind is carrying the water off of its target, maybe even some of it is evaporating into the air, but what we want in any sprinkler is larger droplets that are a little heavier and they're more likely to land on the target that we want them to. If it's coming out in extreme pressure, it's atomizing, it's turning into a mist and then blowing away and we may get a lot of inefficiency in that zone. So it's best to use a pressure regulated head or let's say that a portion of your zone is at a much lower elevation than the rest of the zone. So sometimes that can't be compensated for in pipe sizing. And what pipe sizing is, is a method of designing the system to where you only use the minimum pipe size necessary to deliver the flow out to the head. And it allows you to calculate everything out to give pretty much equal pressure and flow to each head. So that's something that you can do here by buying a pressure regulated head to ensure sure that all of your heads are operating at pretty much the same pressure and that's going to give you a matched precipitation rate across the entire zone. So Hunter gives you an option with their sprays of a 30 or 40 PSI and also a K-Rain has a 40 PSI pressure regulated spray and then uh, excuse me Toro and Rainbird have 30 PSI and I believe 30 PSI with Eritrol as well. So you know with the tops here you can take this top off and use a purple colored bonnet here on the top to indicate reclaimed water. Some areas of our country supply their irrigation systems with water that's reclaimed from um, sewage or maybe from another dirty source, you know, because it doesn't have to be clean potable water to irrigate the ground with. So if you're doing that, then you definitely want to indicate that it's reclaimed water and you can get these, you know, you can buy it by the caseload already installed with the, the purple top or with some manufacturers, you can buy the uh, optional purple top to put on there. And some manufacturers offer what's called a, a flow stop. It may be called X stop, which I think X stop is the Toro version. We're looking at a Toro head here. Um, and what that does is that if the nozzle pops off or gets damaged, it's going to stop this from having full flow through the head so that, you know, let's say that you only come around once every three or four months to do maintenance or there's not somebody, you know, on the property that's constantly looking at the system or checking it out. Or maybe the system runs at three in the morning and nobody ever really sees it. So if the nozzle comes off, 
And we talked about in a previous lesson that the threads on the nozzles are kind of small and delicate. So, you know, it's not uncommon that the nozzle pops off if it's under high pressure or sometimes if it wasn't installed correctly, it'll pop off. So you don't want this running every day at full pressure and flow, just shooting a geyser up. So the X stop, uh, the flow stop, they have a total shut off. But Hunter's um, is a little bit different. What theirs will do if you, you buy the uh, the spray with that feature is that it's going to leave you a tiny 10-foot stream uh, spraying out of the head at a half a gallon per minute so that you can have a visual indication. Whereas I think if this was flowing at full rate, you could get six gallons per minute or so for, you know, if the zone is running for 10 minutes or 12 minutes, that's a lot of lo water lost versus the Hunter version, which just gives you a little tiny stream at half a gallon per minute. So that's a pretty good option. And usually these options only equate to 75 cents to a dollar more per head. Uh, when you look at a lot of water loss through a lost nozzle, you know, that's a significant savings over time. You can get shaft extensions. Let's say that the 6 or 12 inch uh, spray isn't enough and you still need to get up and over a bush or something, um, you can get an extension that sprays on this. I'm not really a fan of those. I mean, it's, you know, use your own experience as a guide, but in my experience, more often than not, the shaft extensions get knocked off because, like I said before, the threads aren't that robust. Or they really, the, the threading isn't that deep on them, so they do get knocked off a lot. Um, so I really don't generally use those. And we have one more feature here. This is actually just a, an accessory that you can buy, and it's a cap. So I mentioned before that you know you can shut a spray off by running the screw in the nozzle down in till it shuts off and of course that requires the the um the filter to be in there but let's say that you know the landscape is changing and you don't necessarily want to leave that spray there you could dig it up down to the fitting here let's say this is the uh, the flex pipe fitting with the threaded fitting here if you take this off you can put a cap on it and then fill the dirt in but I promise you, it's gone from that point forward. Unless you put a flag on it and you don't want just a permanent flag sticking up in your landscape, generally once you cap a head off down at its fitting, you've lost that spray forever. Now you may think, well, we're not going to need it, but things change. Maybe somebody's putting in some flowers or take some out and then they change their mind and you need to go back and they're like, well, I know that there was a spray there somewhere, I mean, my goodness, you could spend a lot of time digging around trying to find that capped off fitting down in the ground. It's better to buy a cap so that you can just, you know, maybe just dig up the top inch or inch and a half of the, the spray. Take this out here. Let's pull this out. Pull the guts out here, the shaft and the spring. And this is just an optional cap that has a little o-ring down in it and then you can fit that on top of there cap this off this is at ground level so uh, you know i mean you'll be able to see the cap but let's say it's you know in, in a mulch bed or in grass or whatever it's not that big of a deal and you haven't lost that location you can always go back take the cap back off get your guts back out and put them back in there and boom you've got your spray back up and running I use those caps quite a bit, you know, because if you do maintenance for residential or light commercial, you are going to be seeing some changes that happen over time as maybe a new owner buys the house and they say, well, we're going to take that little bit of grass out and put a flower bed in there. And then they get tired of maintaining the flowers. And a couple of years later, like, oh, let's take the bed out and put some grass back in there. So these options, you know, kind of give you some, some things to deal with here to change back and forth. So I hope, you know, our covering all of these features and options of sprays shows you what's available out there to give you some variety in the way that you set up and maintain systems. 
And let's not forget the option of a check valve in the head or outside of the head. Most manufacturers make spray heads with an upgrade option to have a check valve in it. And these are pretty handy if you have a low head in the zone, you know, if you have a whole lot of heads up here and then the lowest head is downhill, then water will continue to drain out the head for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and it may wash away soil or erode the ground around the head. So it's always good to have a check valve in that lowest head. And like I said, most manufacturers will give you an option for the check valve to be inside of it, but there are also a couple of external check valves or, or one that you can put into it. Irritrol makes a, a tiny little check valve that you can, you know, take apart their iPro and put it in the base of the head, you know, just underneath the shaft, and it'll be a, a check valve there. Um, Hunter makes one called the HCV, and it's a little inline check valve that you can either screw in the head or put it in the half inch flex pipe coming up to the head. And it has an adjustment in it that you can change the amount of water that it'll hold back. And Toro also has one called the PCV500 that'll screw into the bottom or into the side inlet as well. So I think check valves are a pretty good option to use, especially if you have low head drainage. And a whole lot of customers don't like to see that. And it does cause some erosion issues.